Hey everyone, so in today's Animal Meet and Greet, we're going to be talking about some animals here uh, that don't get quite as much attention as our heritage breeds, but are still equally important uh, to our heritage livestock program here at Connor Prairie. So today we're going to be talking about some of our crossbred livestock. Uh, so a crossbred animal to us means an animal that's not a purebred specific breed. Uh, so often that may mean they're a cross of two breeds, uh, or they may be a mix of several different breeds. Uh, for example, we may have a cross between an English Longhorn and a Shorthorn Cow, or an Arapaw and a Sonnet Goat. As you've learned from our videos over the last few weeks, we're extremely proud of our Heritage Breeds program here at Connor Prairie, and the work that we do to preserve, protect, and educate about heritage historic breeds of livestock. Uh, we work extremely hard to promote our Arapaw goats, our English Longhorn cattle, our Ostlaw hogs, and our Tuna sheep, uh, and do our part to help keep these rare animals alive and thriving. Uh, so since these animals are so rare, you might wonder why we would ever want to have animals that aren't purebred heritage breeds. Uh, so we thought we'd use this video to talk a little bit about why we do that and why it's important to us and the work that we do here at Connor Prairie. First of all, a major reason that we keep crossbred animals here is for historical accuracy. Uh, so for example, in 1836, there weren't as many specific breeds as we know them today. Uh, we have historical descriptions of livestock uh, that were around at the time, and we have documentation saying where they came from. Uh, but specialized breeds as we know them today weren't quite as common. So we may have a description of a great lineback cow with wag horns being brought from England. Well, we can narrow that down based on the types of cattle that were in certain regions of England at the time and draw a pretty good conclusion as to what that animal would have looked like or what breed they would have been, even if the document didn't specifically say it was an English longhorn like this steer here. Um, with that said, because of the various settlers moving in and through this area, a lot of the livestock in the early 1800s in this area would have been a kind of variety rather than one specific breed. So in 1836, shorthorns, like this cow here, would have been kind of the hot breed that people wanted to raise. Uh, however, they were extremely expensive. We have records of bulls selling for thousands of dollars, which was a ton of money at the time. Uh, so most people couldn't just sell their cows and buy all shorthorns. Uh, so instead, farmers might work together to purchase a bull to breed to their existing cows. Uh, the offspring would then be half shorthorn, which then eventually could be bred back to a shorthorn. Uh, and over time, the farmers could improve their herd that way, meaning that herds uh, would have had a lot of crosses. So for us here in Prairie Town, we have a few shorthorn cross cows that represent that. This cow here is an example of that. She's actually three quarters English longhorn and a quarter shorthorn. This cow here is a half shorthorn, half English longhorn, uh, which shows what those cattle would have looked like. Crossbreeding is also a way to obtain positive traits for multiple breeds in a single animal. Uh, so one breed, for example, may be really, really good at milk production, yeah. uh, but they may require lots and lots of extra feed and just don't do well foraging on pasture. So you might be able to cross a high producing dairy animal with a hardier but lower producing yeah. breed uh, and still keep a relatively high milk production with the ability to keep their condition on rougher forage. Or you may have a breed of sheep that has beautiful wool uh, but don't tend to be as good a mother's or maybe aren't as calm or as gentle as other breeds. Uh, so sometimes if you cross those breeds you can accentuate the positive traits in the offspring. Uh, for example, while our primary flock of sheep are Tunis, um, we have a couple of Horn Dorset Lester long wool crosses that we've kept back over the years. Uh, they've kept the beautiful fleece, but they also have the good mothering instinct and the calm disposition of the horned dorsets. Uh, when we cross them with our Tunis ram, these ewes typically produce faster growing lambs with beautiful fleeces, calm dispositions, uh, and that works perfectly for us in animal encounters. Uh, we've also crossed our Arapaw and Sonnen goats before, producing small kids that are easy for first-time moms to deliver, uh, but they grow fast on the Sonnen's rich milk and are just a little bit hardier and better at foraging than the purebred Sonnen's. This was done historically as well. For example, we have records from the late 1700s of George Washington's grandson uh, using what was likely a Tunis ram on his Lester ewes to increase meat quality as well as wool production, uh, creating a breed called Arlington's, uh, unable to look very similar to these ewe lambs here, uh, which are a very similar cross. So overall, while it's extremely important to keep our purebred genetics alive, there are times when a crossbred is desirable as well. So keep an eye out next time you visit Connor Prairie to see if you can identify some of our crossbred animals as well as our purebred heritage breeds. Thanks for watching and we look forward to bringing you more animal meet and greets soon. Yay!